thanksgiving to the one who is shining in the darkness. No longer will the sun light your way, nor the brightness of the moon by night. And your God will be your glory.
Life and death stand side by side as we enter into Good Friday. In John's Passion account, Jesus reveals the power and glory of God, even as he is put on trial and sentenced to death. Standing with the disciples at the foot of the cross, we pray for the whole world in the ancient bidding prayer, as Christ's death offers life to all. We gather in solemn devotion, but always with the promise that the tree around which we assemble is indeed a tree of life. And so again, this night, we depart silently as we anticipate the three days, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the Easter Vigil, leading us to the resurrection of our Lord. Let us pray. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christe eleison, Christ have mercy. Lord, grant us your peace. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is a reading from Isaiah, chapters 52 and 53. The fourth servant poem promises ultimate vindication for the servant, who made his life an offering for sin. The servant pours himself out to death and is numbered with the transgressors, images that the early church saw as important keys for understanding the death of Jesus. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished by him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of mortals. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them they shall see, and that which they had not heard they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, 
he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The second reading is a reading from Hebrews chapter 10. In the death of Jesus, forgiveness of sins is accomplished, and access to God is established. Hence, when we gather together for worship, and when we love others, we experience anew the benefit of Jesus' death. After the Holy Spirit says, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, and since we have great priests over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean, from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The Holy Gospel for this Good Friday is found in Luke, the 23rd chapter. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, 
Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, when the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Beloved in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Why did this happen? Why did Jesus die on a cross? I remember hearing my father as a small boy say things like, Jesus died on a cross for my sins. Even now, some 60 years later, I'm thankful for my father's words. I I also wonder about the depth of those words, the meaning of those words. And the word we just heard a few moments ago from the suffering servant passage in Isaiah. Even the introduction to those verses could have more than one meaning. We heard that this servant poem, of which there are four, promises ultimate vindication for the servant who made his life an offering for sin. The letter to the Hebrews that we heard also has great meaning. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. The long-standing tradition is that Jesus needed to die to satisfy the judgment of God. Yes, even the anger of God in the face of our ongoing sin. So today, at this point, and in my life, uh, I've had time to think, I suppose, maybe too much time. Today, when I read the gospel story of the crucifixion of Jesus, it just doesn't seem like he is one bearing punishment for the behavior of my failings. Just take, for instance, the short passage that we just heard from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus is showing love in the presence of great hatred, of powerful sin. And yet he's filled with love. And if all he came to do was to make God satisfied or to make God happy, why would he need to bother with things like, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing? And to the criminal, that criminal, the, the good one, <laughs> who seemed to have a better attitude now that he was dying than he must have had when he committed his offense. It was a capital offense. And he says, Jesus remember me. And I think it's stunning, a surprise when Jesus says, today you'll be with me in paradise. In these days of way too much Facebook interaction and way too many people wanting to make sense of the coronavirus and making sense of God, I hear some people I know and love and people I don't know trying to make sense out of this in some ways that I think are somewhat dangerous. I hear some saying that this is God's plan, that, that we blew it. And we need this kind of punishment to get us back on track. That's the way it works. I just don't think it works that way. What if the answer to the question, why did Jesus die on the cross, comes from a different angle, a different perspective? I think I shared in a sermon back when we were together, in a sermon uh, speaking some words from Father Richard Rohr, that he believes that Jesus didn't come to die on the cross on the earth to change God, God's viewpoint, but rather Jesus came to earth to die on a cross to change our point of view. We'll talk more about this on Easter Sunday, but what if, what if Jesus came to help us understand that God's more excited about loving us than ever about punishing us? Standing in solidarity with humanity, Jesus came to the to earth. He came to the cross. In the most unimaginable place of suffering, Jesus was there. To remind us that God is there. That Jesus, that God, is with us in every moment of what is happening around us, even now. So Christ is with you. And yeah, it's still okay to be afraid. And when Christ is with you, 
It's okay to be frustrated. When Christ is with you, it's even okay to be angry in your fear. Christ didn't come to catch up on my sins because they keep flowing. How do you keep up with that? I believe Christ came to remind us that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit love us. At the very center of the triune God is life and love for every moment. So yes, even now, especially now, our loving God does not send punishment like some have described. Instead, Jesus came as the Christ with a message for all of God's loving purpose and presence. And so we do well to stand with that criminal and pray aloud with him. Jesus, remember me. Amen. for Good Friday. Each petition is followed by a time of silent prayer. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the Holy Church throughout the world, our community, the state, the nation, and all the world. Almighty and eternal God, you have shown your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. By your Holy Spirit, guide the Church and gather it throughout the world. Help it to persevere in faith and proclaim your name. And bring the good news of salvation in Christ to all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our bishops, for our pastors, and all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, 
pastors, other ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church, and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray for those preparing for baptism. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church, increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism, give them new birth as your children, and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith, and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and the lives of the Christians and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray these things which the Lord would have us ask as we join together praying the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Nailing on the Cross <laughs> 